number one uh, trender on Twitter was actually Rand Paul during the debate. The number one political trending tweet on um, thing on Twitter was Rand Rowley. Yes, Rand Paul was uh, trending better than everything else in the debate, and there's a reason why. Um, Rand Paul has the grassroots network throughout this country, not just in Iowa, not just in Alabama where I'm from, but across this country to really take this election by storm. And we're going to see in a few days in Iowa and a few days in New Hampshire what we mean by that. All right, Nathaniel, did you have anything else to add to wrap up? I like your program. Oh, <laughs> all right. An info warrior. All right, see, that's somebody that shows up right, right. there. Somebody that shows up, next thing you know, he's in the debate. So, folks, I'll tell you what, you know, we make a lot of fun of the the debate, uh, the GOP candidates, et cetera, and the Paul Ryans and the John Boehners in the world. But you know who we really have to blame for the situation we're in is because good men and women have done nothing. Good men and women have let evil come upon our nation. So it is time. We have got the numbers, folks. That's what frustrates me so badly. I know it frustrates Alex because we have the numbers to restore our Constitution, folks. If we do lose this country, if it does go down the tubes, each of us just need to look in the mirror because we didn't do enough. I agree. Thank you, Richard. I agree. Let's go and, to... And uh, I, I just want to say this. Mm -hmm. I really think Rand Paul was the winner of the debate. Yeah. He got the most coverage. Mm -hmm. yes. More people talking about him. By not being in, he really stood out. So I think he was definitely in, in a debate and, that... To me, Rob, was, was to one answer, of the most boring we've seen so far. And he got to answer substantive questions instead of the boilerplate right. repetitions that we hear from Fox News. And I got to say, I feel like he must have just ripped the shackles off of whoever has been advising him. Obviously, he came on the show. He flipped the bird to the media today. I mean, he's he's coming out of his shell a little bit. So something's going on. That's good. Yeah, I think it'll be uh, very encouraging for him to... Uh, to get out of the uh, constraints of uh, what you should do and mm -hmm. just do what he needs to do. Right. Um, let's let's close up here, I guess, with uh, comments from everybody as to uh, what they thought about the debate. Let's go to uh, Darren. Would you like to uh, have a comment about closing comment about the debate tonight? Uh, who did you think uh, did well and or what what stood out to you? Well, I think that last the guy that Richard was talking to said it all when he said, you know, who lost the debate and that was the American people by not having Rand Paul mm -hmm. on the stage, but but then again through social media, you know, he 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 did pretty well. That's right. Look, I was just going to tell people out there to just don't be afraid to speak your mind because the days of tiptoeing around issues because you're afraid you're trying to be politically correct or you, you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings those days are over. You know, it's time we start stepping on toes and we really need to get together, unite, and, and together we can, we can take our country back. I agree. I agree. We yeah. need to decide, I think, what our, our priority is. And, and I know my priority is liberty. Uh, that's what this country was founded upon. It was founded upon the idea that that's what government's purpose was, was to protect our liberty, not to make us safe. If we're free, we can make ourselves safe. If mm -hmm. we're not free, uh, we'll never be safe. Uh, Leanne, what's your... Well, I think, you know, just this the debate and how it was all handled and how Rand Paul got shut out and, and how they um, manipulated the polls and all of that. I feel like people are really beginning to see behind the curtain and they see that the candidates they have up there are giving those same canned answers and they're not bringing anything new to the stage. Now they're all saying, well, let's not beat up each other because... You know, if we show every everyone's bad stripes here, then we're not going to have anyone to go up against Hillary Clinton. Yeah. You know, the media is going to attack us enough uh, because really they're, they're none of them. I think I do. I will not vote for the lesser of two evils. Mm. I refuse to do that. I'll be another right in if, if my candidate doesn't isn't the choice. I, re, I will not vote for the lesser of two evils. And unfortunately, you know, I have to agree uh, with that gentleman that that Richard was was speaking with is that, you know, America is the one that's going to lose if this is the kind of debate, if we settle for allowing these people to just continue representing us. I agree. Jakari? That's excellent. Uh, I just, the you know, dovetail what everybody else is saying. Yes, so I guess people did lose out in a way by not having ran there, but I think we also won in a way by showing people a new way to go about right. it, where you don't have to be restricted to Fox or CNN mm -hmm. or MSNBC. You can go on your own platform, whether it be your personal website, whether it be the internet ghettos, whatever, but you can go make a big way. Uh, you can flip the birds in the media, still be the number one trending guy, 
on Twitter. It's a real shake up to the system. I'm pretty sure the system doesn't like it, especially Fox News. Yep. But this most recent debate, how a guy can go on Periscope and dwarf uh, their, their coverage as far as how well he was received. Right. Now he had exclusive uh, content, you know, he had everybody asking him the questions, he had a chance to give real uncensored answers. And I think while we did lose by not having better representation on the stage, we did win by showing people a different way to go about it. Right. I agree. Absolutely. Uh, Richard Reeves in South Carolina, your comments on the debate. Yes, uh, I want to elaborate some more on Rand Paul. I tell you, one of my frustrations was with Rand Paul, as much as I liked him, is that he just wouldn't come out and be hardcore enough in those earlier debates. I think, you know, Rand Paul should have just left strategy at home and said, hey, man, he should have done an Alex Jones. I mean, he should have just come out like Alex Jones, been hardcore on stuff during those debates. I think it would have driven Donald Trump even to be more truthful. So, And I think it criticized the Rand Paul criticism of Donald Trump hurt Rand Paul. He should have made an alliance, kind of like in that game Survivor, made an alliance with Donald Trump understanding that potentially Trump is an ally, not a foe, not an enemy. And I think that they could have moved the ball a lot more forward if they'd have taken that tack. So that was a disappointment. I mean, that's like I was at the Texas State Convention in 2012. And in the midst of that convention, Rand Paul comes out and endorses Mitt Romney. In the meantime, his dad, Ron Paul, is still running for president. We yeah. had not even voted yet. So yeah. some of the things he done <clears throat> that he did were really frustrating. But, you know, maybe now... Maybe now he'll get more hardcore because he's still got some cachet. I think potentially he's got a chance of ending up top three in Iowa because in Iowa it's about the ground game. The caucus system benefits people that have the ground game. We know in Iowa in 2000, 2008, 2012 that Ron Paul had ground game. So Ron Paul hopefully has leveraged that. We're going to find out here shortly in a couple of weeks. You know, Richard, uh, when you're talking about him endorsing Mitt Romney while his dad was still in there, I, I think the Achilles heel of, of Rand Paul has been his devotion to party. Uh, when I yeah. look at the very first debate, uh, the thing that he got so incensed about with Donald Trump at, at the beginning was the idea yeah. that Donald Trump might run as an independent. I mean, he was truly angry about that. Yeah. And so perhaps the thing that may take uh, Rand Paul out of his shell may make him more authentic is this shunning by the uh, GOP establishment this early in the game. Because clearly, he, he said that. He said this is coming from the GOP establishment. Of course, the means of that was to use Fox and Bloomberg to, uh, uh, to embargo that poll so they could play with the numbers. He sees what's going on, so maybe he will lose this devotion to partisan uh, politics, to the mm -hmm. GOP. And, and just go for principle. That's my hope right. uh, that he'll get tough and, and pull this out. He well, needs to go totally hardcore. He needs to go totally hardcore. I was very frustrated because it was like he had one foot in the Patriot Party, one foot in the Establishment Party. And like I told Alex, I said, he might as well stand in the left lane of an interstate where it's 80 miles an hour <laughs> out in West Texas. That's right. Because that's exactly what happened to him. He flat got, got, just got run over. But now, hey, thankfully, because of this, Maybe he will really step up his game. I'm looking forward to it. That's right. Well, thank you, Richard. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll be looking for more reports from you in uh, Iowa and New Hampshire, I guess, because that's coming up pretty soon. We're going to have the Iowa caucus uh, February the 1st. There's going to be another GOP debate. That will be on a weekend. We will not be covering that. And we will not be covering the Democrat debate that's going to be taking place during the football uh, playoffs. playoffs. <laughs> so they don't <laughs> put it on there. I got to say, as my closing comments here, that uh, I didn't see any highlights of the debate, quite frankly. In the past, we've had uh, some very good points that were made typically by Rand Paul, pointing out that uh, if you create a no-fly zone, uh, you're going to be going head-to-head -head with the Russians. You're going to be shooting down a Russian plane. You're going to be starting World War III. Things like that that we saw in previous debates. And I'm sure that's why Rand Paul was not included tonight. So I didn't see any highlights or things that I thought were really good out of this debate. I thought uh, Donald Trump came away looking very weak after opening up, I think, a real important objection to Ted Cruz in terms of the natural born citizenship. And he did not look at Lawrence Tribe's point that, uh, that uh, Ted Cruz is trying to have it both ways, to say he supports uh, constitutional originalists, uh, will appoint them to the Supreme Court, and yet he wants to jettison this. They allowed, and especially Trump, allowed uh, the master debater, uh, Ted Cruz, to completely avoid the topic, to talk about it in a way that he wanted to, and to lie about the fact that Donald Trump doesn't have natural-born citizenship requirements. Let's understand, 
Donald Trump's mother uh, had been an American citizen four years before he was born, which puts him in a completely different category than the other birth, anchor babies that are there and puts him in a completely different category than Ted Cruz, who was not born in America, whose uh, father was not an American citizen and whose mother perhaps had given up her American citizenship by becoming a Canadian citizen. She was on the voter rolls in Canada. So that clearly is a big difference between Donald Trump. His grandfather had come in the 1880s. Uh, so there is that was an outright lie. So I think we saw Ted Cruz at his most evasive, at his most dishonest. I, I personally, I, I feel like Camille Paglia had it right on the nose when she said, he has the eyes of a shark. I never have trusted Ted Cruz. I always believed that he was uh, playing the patriot movement, the liberty movement, never more so than when I see what is happening now with him turning against Snowden, uh, not showing up to uh, vote for audit the Fed, and then the kind of lies that we saw tonight in this debate about natural born citizenship. Well, that's it for our live coverage. Thanks for joining us here at Infowars.com. And we'll be back tomorrow at 11 uh, Central and 12 o'clock Eastern with the Alex Jones Radio Show. Join us then.